Let's have a look at what's happening in the province of Quebec before we move on to the VCs and angel and the private equity. So, uh, Monsieur Beauchamp, uh, if you would like to come here from uh, the ETS Etudes Technologiques Supérieures. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for letting me the opportunity to present uh, my school, but also a subset of what we call the uh, ecosystem in Quebec. Actually, I will present only the part around the ETS Montreal. What we are developing is called the District of Innovation. So let's start, first of all, to start about Montreal. Montreal is a city of knowledge and creativity. Maybe you don't know, but Montreal has more than <coughs> university students per capita than anywhere else uh, in the continent. Uh, for example, every year we do graduate 3,000 IT person in uh, Montreal. There are 10 universities, four which are world class, and Montreal ranks first in university research investment in Canada. Some of the university on the top, you've seen the research in comprehensive university, and on the middle, you have the specialized school like ETS, which are standalone university but specialized in one major field like ETS and Polytechnic in Engineering and HEC Montreal in Management and other campus are dedicated also in downtown Montreal. Montreal is also the more research center than any other city in Canada in many areas such as aerospace, clean tech information and communication technology. Montreal is also the home of 60,000 companies that produce or generate some 30 billion dollar in annual export and the GDP is about 130, should reach 150 within the end of this year. Montreal also ranked in Canada for number one in patent field, the percentage of bilingual and trilingual uh, people, as you can imagine, uh, risk capital investment, as well as cost of living. This is a well keep secret in Montreal, it's very cheap, so that's great. Some uh, statistics, uh, the number of students, foreign student institution, as well as the number of residents around the area of Montreal. Some picture Montreal because you will probably come in Montreal very soon. So uh, a lot of creativity, a lot of nice place to be, a lot of sport. Hope the next meeting will be around the spring. Is that not spring? Summer? That's perfect. That will be the, the, the best time of the year to come. Let's talk about the ETS, uh, an engineering school that is uh, quite unique in Canada that I have the honor to uh, lead for the last 10 years and also help to, to develop. Actually, the mission of the school is a national mission. Our mission is to develop most of the region, but to conduct research in applied engineering and also in technology for the development of many regions of the field. So ETS today, it has more than 6,400 students with more than 1,400 at the grad level, 330 at the PhD in 75 programs. Uh, actually, at ETS, we are training one out of four engineers in Quebec uh, every year. I think only Toronto and Waterloo <coughs> do graduate more engineers than us, I think. The placement of rate, and uh, we'll I will explain to you uh, why. Actually, for every graduate in software engineering and information <coughs> technology engineering, they get 24, 21 job offer right now. In construction engineering, we're talking about 11 and on the remaining engineering degree, we're talking about five to eight. And ETS is placing more than 2,400 interns every year. This is the largest mandatory, mandatory core program in Canada. We do receive 3,200 offers. Last year, there were almost 800 offers that were not able to place students in order to accommodate that. Every student gets at least $40,000 during their study at ETS, as a bachelor. We are very proud that two-thirds of our students goes to small and medium-sized enterprise. So those engineers are very suitable for the development. They are vector innovation for companies. And this is also the highest rate in Canada. Most of universities usually conduct between 15 to 20 percent of the research uh, in combination or in collaboration with industry. In our case, it's 70 percent with uh, more than 200 companies. And also the uh, ETS, uh, we have developed uh, a large uh, uh, area of dorm. I think we have almost 1,300 beds on the campus. Why do we have so many beds? It's because we have a national mission. So every time someone is getting a work term outside the region of Montreal, uh, he can sell a lease, and then we reserve him back a bed when he comes back. So that mobility allows us to send more engineers on the region compared to the number of students. 
that are coming from that region. So that, that's our way that we have developed the <laughs> economic region around uh, uh, the Quebec. So what is the secret of uh, ETS actually? It's the uh, unique uh, uh, stream of training of engineers. On the left side, you have the regular engineering stream for uh, engineering Quebec. So after the 11th year, because the high school in Quebec is 11, all the students <coughs> must go to the college we call CEGEP for two years of general science, mathematics, and physics. Then they go through four years in the regular engineering school, which add up to 17 years, one year more than the rest of Canada and the rest of US, in the US. While in the technical path on the right side, all our students have to go through the technical degrees. So all our students are already technicians. So we are training engineers out of the technicians. So every graduate from our school has seven years of training, technical, engineer, and, and also uh, add up to one full years of experience in work term. So that's why the company li like it so much. And this is why the co-op system is working well, because even on the first semester, the student is already profitable for the company because he already has a first degree or first technical degree. All our courses uh, have a practical uh, assignment, which is unique. Usually in engineering, in engineering school, it's only the first year, while in our case, it's during the fourth year. And also, all the faculty members come from the industry, even though they have PhD as well. So when we hire a new professor without industrial experience, the school is sending them one year in industry not to do uh, a postdoc, sorry, only to get engineering training, because all the model is based on the industrial experience. So those are the different programs that we offering at the school, construction, automated, electrical, software, and so on. Some are unique uh, in Quebec and also unique in Canada. Some are part of the uh, 75 programs. In order to get 2,400 work times, we, uh, we have contact with more than 10,000 10, companies in Quebec. We do receive uh, 3,200 work time offer, conduct almost 5,000 interviews in the campus. That produced 2,400. Our students, I think they're pretty good. Uh, every year, they do rank in the top in all the competition in North America, from Sonia, Concrete, Kenyoe, or Formula so If you are from engineering school, you know those competitions. Uh, ETS is most and often uh, one of the universities to beat all across North America. We also start the uh, Technical Entrepreneurship Center at ETS uh, 13 years ago. We call it the Centex, where the mission is to encourage ETS students also graduates to create technology businesses. So far, we have created 65 businesses uh, uh, and almost 340 employees, which would add up to close to 500 by the end of the year. 31 are still in incubator right now in, uh, in ETS, and the average cost of the creation of the job is $2,000 <coughs> per job, which is very low. Valeo is also a society where ETS is a member. The mission is to enhance the commercial exploitation potential of university research unit. Uh, we are part of that society. Others, University in Montreal, Concordia, UCAM, ETS, and also University from the network of University of Quebec, also member of this society, which commanditate this event today. So the model is very specific. <coughs> it's based on collaboration with industry. So we do collaborate with 800 companies at the co-op system, 200 at the research, 50% of my board come from the industry, 80% of my executive committee come from the industry. Actually, I'm the only one that doesn't come from the industry. And this is unique in Canada. 30% at the Senate, where you discuss about pedagogy, courses, and so on, come from the industry. So everything we do, everything we breathe, everything we think, come from the industry. That's the way the model has been fit, it has been designed to fulfill the need of the industry. As a research, I said that 75% come from the industry. We have 24 research chairs, 30 groups, 700 publications a year, patent, of course. We have uh, in top 20 in research intensity, but when you remove the medical university, we rank in the top five, probably around Ryerson as well. ETS is uh, ideally located in downtown Montreal. I think we moved to that location in 1997, actually, and almost 15 years ago. And uh, actually, this area, it's called Griffin Town. It used to be the heart of the economic development of Canada one century ago. But the last 10 or 15 and 20 and 40 years, most of the company closed, 
And the people that knows Montreal knows that area was almost abandoned for many years. And one of the reasons why there was not that much development or real estate is because of the contamination of the land, mainly contaminated by uh, residue of coal uh, because of the way they were using energy at that time. Now, because of the real estate uh, has grown up, the cost of decontamination is marginal to the development of projects. So now it's becoming the hardest area in Montreal to do development. So since we moved to that uh, specific uh, area, mm. close by downtown, as you can see, uh, we have acquired land by buying those land, but also we use uh, uh, a powerful law that allow, you, that allow allow us to expropriate those lands. So we did that for almost the last 10 years. And also we did expropriate an old brewery. So we talked about being an engineer a few <laughs> minutes ago. I think we did a little bit further. We bought a brewery actually. So, so we, we built the engineering school inside the brewery. It was a good idea because, not only because of the beer, but those buildings which has been built at the beginning of the century are very suitable for engineering school because of the height of the ceiling, but also you can have heavy labs all over the place, even on the top ceiling, on the basement. This would cost a fortune to, do, to have such a building. So for the next the last 10 years, we have invested almost $300 million to develop the first part of the, the campus, yet we have 2 million square feet, 1 million square feet of institutional uh, uh, spaces and about uh, 1 million square feet of dorms for the student and research centers, I said. Now we have some development. You can see the line that uh, separates the, the campus. Uh, this is a Peel Street on the right side or east side. This is for the industry collaboration. It's part of the old brewery. From the left side or west side, this is for the institutional uh, development. So one project that uh, will be finished by the spring uh, is Innovation Center. This is a 65,000 square feet uh, building that will be available for companies, small and medium sized enterprise, but also sale of innovation of existing company that will rent the space inside that building. Once they are inside that building, they have access to all our equipment, lab students, and so on. So it's an accelerator of innovation, not, a, not an incubator. The company that are inside that building are already standalone company that can afford a regular rent compared to the market. So that's the way the design has been done. Now we are in discussion with Miguel because uh, we will share the uh, ownership on another 200,000 uh, square feet for the same purpose in order to attract companies and small and medium sized uh, enterprise. I will talk about the Miguel ETS partnership in a uh, in few minutes. So almost 1 million square feet available for the next 10 years to develop collaboration with industry within this old brewery that has been built, most of those buildings in 1920s and so on. We also finished the fourth and last uh, dorms uh, that will be ready by this fall. This will be uh, mainly available for international students. You should know that at our undergraduate student, we don't have any international student because of the mandatory core program, it's only Keynesian student. But at the grad level, of course, we do attract international students because uh, there is no obligation for the work. And also we are building uh, within the next few years, two years from now, the student house, this is the missing part of the big puzzle to create uh, an animation, but also create a way of light within the campus. Because when you want to create an urban campus, you need place so the people will meet together and so on. So within the next two years, we should have invest half a billion dollars to develop that. Since ETS has decided to locate its installation in, uh, in Griffintown, as I said earlier, uh, the, all the real estate has been increased. As a matter of fact, uh, when we did the expropriation, we pay $80 per square feet. Now the land uh, just next to ETS has been sold two years ago at $400 square feet. So you can imagine only five years after. And now this area is becoming the hottest area and the, a lot of projects, more than six billion of investment has been announced. Right now in this area, you have $2.5 billion in construction actually in many projects, such as different uh, companies that are invested around ETS because of the very, uh, very beautiful location and very uh, smart location. So ETS is in the art of a sector undergoing massive urban revitalization because of what I explained uh, <coughs> late, uh, lately. 
So this is give you a map of all of the project in the specific area. And one thing you should know is that even actually within a radius of 1.5 kilometers around ETS is the highest concentration of <coughs> information technology and multimedia worker in Canada. We're talking about 20,000 person right now and over 300 companies that are already located in that specific area. So the idea of creating an innovation district in that area emerged from that uh, constatation because the way the project were coming in that specific area, it was going to be mainly real estate for condominiums and apartments and so on. So we said we have a very opportunity in that specific area in order to avoid ghettos of apartments and so on to create a mixity of use and a mixity of social. That is that on the same street to have commercial use, to have business use and apartment and so on. So that the people that will live in that area not only will live but on, on also will work over there. So people will be in contact 24 hours a day. That's the vision around this innovation district. And it is well located next to downtown, next to the international district, next to the health district and also next to the entertainment district that create a very exciting buzz and you see the very close distance between uh, McGill and ETS. So actually we developing uh, a creative uh, environment like Toronto did in some part with the Marsh and also Barcelona I think did a much major experience with the new district and also Boston uh, just launched an innovation district a year and a half ago uh, where they're doing uh, basically the same thing to attract companies with way of life, university, so that the people will stay in the environment for uh, many times. So the vision is to create a quartier that integrates university, economy worker and living environment. So it's an ecosystem that will be suitable or considered to innovation residence, commercial, social, recreational, cultural, and also green space. Why ETS and McGill? We are so different, but that's the point. We're so different, so that's why we decided to work together. McGill is a well-known, recognized university internationally, based mainly, mainly on research activities. ETS is a flagship of university enterprise collaboration all over Canada. And when we work together, you can imagine that the technology readiness level, the TRL, from one to nine, one being the theory and nine being the product, you can see that working all together, we cover all the spectrum of innovation. So that's the reason why they decided to work together. And with that spectrum, we will be able to offer services and whatever the small and medium sized enterprise and company will need in that specific area. So now we'll finish on the model. It's very simple. What is the model that uh, we are following for the last years and a half? And we try to launch the, the, the quartier maybe next year. So actually, it's the uh, integration of those four segments of synergy, industrial, urban, education, innovation, social and cultural. When you have only the industrial segment in an area, we call it an industrial park. When you combine the industrial segment with the education innovation segment, the integration is a science and technology part. Of course, you, you put the research center, university, close to company. It doesn't mean that things will happen. Because after 5 p.m., people will be out of their way. They will be somewhere else on the area and so on. If you have a chance to put uh, that area downtown, then you add another dimension, which is called the urban segment. This is uh, what we, uh, we had in mind at the beginning. But the main objective to us is to bring the social and the cultural segment in that specific. And then the integration of all those segments, we create what we call an innovation district. So that's a place where people will live, raise their family, entertain themselves, and also meet. And the role of the university in that model is to animate those people, entertain them, entertain, scientifically entertain, of course put people together in different activities and so on, and then things will happen uh, eventually. Barcelona did that 13 years ago in their District 22. They did the same thing. And after 13 years, even though the crisis that hit Spain, you knew that about a uh, few years uh, from the last five years, they have been created 40,000 uh, employees and attract 1,400 
company in that specific area, even though they were not able to put all the ingredients, for instance, the social and cultural segment, they were not able to, uh, to achieve that yet because of the crisis and so on. So this is what we're trying to do. Uh, the launching will be next year. We will create the uh, creative center that will be used to generate idea and things like that. So all the component we are benchmarking with the, the best area like Boston, Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, in Europe and so on to create the, what we call uh, the Cartier Innovation. So this is part of what we're doing. This is part of the uh, Quebec uh, ecosystem for innovation. And uh, as I have been looking all around the world, uh, it seems like a lot of cities are going in that direction now to create a, a very um, creative community. One thing I should say about that uh, area, one thing you should be uh, careful is that you should always maintain low-cost apartment no matter what you develop because you want to avoid in those areas gentrification, which means that to remove all the low-class people. Because if you want a creative community, like with artists and so on, you need those apartments and low-cost living to bring all those people together and all the mixity, social mixity and news mixity, something will happen. And this is what we're doing right now. So thank you so much.